So I said the uh, voltage control filter was a little confusing to me. Well, here's the original schematic. Uh, maybe not the original original, but this one's a 1971 schematic. And you can see right in the center of the schematic, a long chain of differential pair transistors. And there's little capacitors kind of making a ladder out of the thing. So it's, it is a weird ladder thing and it is a filter. So <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty bizarre. Let me, let me show you another one. All right. Here's the schematic from the micro Moog. Um, and over on the left here, you can see the same strange configuration. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it's pretty strange. <laughs> So I needed to learn about this thing. I needed to figure it out. Now, somehow it's a voltage control filter, not just a filter, but a voltage control filter. Now, I was lucky enough to find a great source. Uh, I found this basically dissertation. I mean, this guy could get his PhD on Moog transistor ladders and derivative filters. This Timothy um, Snitch, Snitch Gold. I don't know. I'm going to butcher it. Anyway, he he. He wrote this amazing um, write-up on these filters, so what they do. I, oh, yeah. So I guess the filter ladder came from the 1960s. Um, and they work on differential current mirror type weird things. And he runs through all of the math. And anyway, shows you the filter here. So this is, this is the filter. So it's got all of these sections of capacitors and each differential pair has its own bias point. So this is a um, string of resistors that sets the bias point of each, uh, basically of each uh, capacitor and uh, moves it up in voltage. And um, anyway, there's a, the input is a differential and the output is differential. And the way that you tune the filter, the way that it changes frequency with voltage is that you actually change the current so that the, the, the long tail current in this thing is what changes the performance or changes the frequency response of the filter. Um, now, he runs through a whole bunch of math and derivations and stuff to come up with a transfer function and mathematics. And yeah, it's super, super ugly. Um, then he talks about, uh, let's see here, let me keep going down. Uh, so the filters are basically usually used with a feedback, um, which sharpens their drop. It, 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 it causes the frequent, the, uh, the dB per octave to be much steeper. Um, it adds a little bit of ringing, um, but it makes it much, much steeper. So here he's showing how that feedback occurs. And it is a, uh, it uses a, um, uh, voltage to current amplifier in it. Um, so yeah, I think the original ones had like a, a, a 3080, used in them anyway so this is what it does so if it's working correctly this is how it works so if, as you change the current the frequency response will move back and forth now this is the with the one with the feedback in it so you get this little peaking peaking at the start and then you get a drop a, a, a 24 db um, roll off on these things so that's the way that filter works now they have a he had a really nice patent on this thing. So the competition said, oh, uh, yeah, we'd like that too, but we can't step on the patent. So then they generated diode ladders. And so these are some filters uh, that were done by other companies. Uh, the TB303 was the first one. And it's basically the same thing, but instead of using transistors and biasing them, it just uses a bunch of uh, stepped diodes. Um, so... Uh, I think I'll probably build this one, but maybe I'll build both. I'm not sure. I probably, I don't know. I'll probably build both. <laughs> what the hey? It's just a PC board. So anyway, there's different versions of this, uh, but they basically all work the same way. All right. Uh, yeah, here's one make, with Roland 100 used used a step diode. Everybody uses step diodes except for Moog. Um, and let's see, let's keep going down in his paper here. Then he derives all the equations for the uh, diode ladder one. Yeah, here's a bunch of math. 
Uh, go down, 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 down. Here's the one with the feedback in it. And here's its response. So it does basically what the Moog one does, right? Looks the same. So um, again, why build the Moog one if you can build the diode one? It looks like it's the same. Now, there's some debate whether they sound different or not. Um, so uh, I'll leave that up to musicians, but um, looks the same to me. I don't know. It looks kind of the same. Talks about using either um, diodes, like a 1N4148, or just an NPN with the base collector shorted together makes it into a diode. And so they have different um, results. Anyway, so if we take a look at this, this is without feedback. Okay, so this is what the filter does without feedback. Okay, so I thought, okay, great. Uh, let me see if I can reproduce that. So uh, there's my reproduction. That looks pretty good, huh? Uh, let's see if I can do kind of do them side by side here, sort of, kind of. Anyway, you get the idea that his, yeah, there we go. How, how's that? Uh, his and mine are basically the same. So my, my, my spice model works. All right. So let's close this. So here's my spice model. I'm using uh, transistors wired as diodes. And then there's a, uh, a differential pair in the front, differential pair at the top. And, um, and there's a voltage source that runs the differential pair at the bottom. There's a DC offset that you can apply. There's a, a current that we can change. That's the step here in the plot is I'm changing the different DC currents in the tail. And then I have this thing running at 15 volts. Okay, so that's uh, coming at the top here. And the top's all biased, just, uh, just hard on. And then the uh, output, I'm just grounding one of them and taking the other one. So I'm looking at the differential pair um, with my with my graph. So it looks pretty good, huh? Uh, stepping, I'm stepping what the exact same values he stepped, which was 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, and 500 microamps. Okay, so the steps are in microamps. Um, and yeah, looking pretty good. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, let's go back to his, see if there's anything more in his... Uh, he does some cool 3D plots and stuff for you double E's looking at uh, poles and zeros and stuff. Um, I don't know much of this stuff. Um, and you can look at the phase responses. I didn't look at the phase of these filters. I guess I could turn that on. Let's see here. AC analysis limits. Let me turn the phase back on. Uh, phase is on. Look at the phase of the out put and run that and ah, my face is messed up hmm. why is my face messed up AC limits uh maybe i need to auto scale yeah there we go i auto scaled um so i don't know i'm not sure what to make out of like i said i was kind of confused with phase but there you go there's the body plot um so if you're a masochist, you can go read this paper and look at all the nice math this guy did. Um, or if you're like me, you're just going to build it and listen to it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that'll be fun. I think I'll probably, I'll probably make, um, since it's just a PC board layout thing, I'll, I'll put both filters in so we can put them side by side and listen to them and see if we, if we hear any difference or not. Um, that might, that might be interesting. Now there's a whole bunch of other things that you need to worry about. Let's see here. Yeah. So let's see this schematic. So the output of this, uh, pair here goes into a, um, a two J fets, uh, that are balanced. And then that is still a current mirror. So you're taking the currents here and you're mirroring them over here. You're taking those currents and you're feeding the uh, uh, the voltage differences here into the 3080. It's generating its own current. And then its current gets multiplied down. It, it, it comes down, the output goes, goes from left to right. It goes through another 3080, which is the voltage controlled amplifier. So this one applies the um, 
uh, applies the envelope and then a final amplifier to drive the uh, coax and output. And then um, you can see that also the, the output goes now from this point left and it is the feedback. It feeds back into the other side of the filter. And um, so I'll have, to, I'll have to look at that, figure out what normal full and tone is, different, different settings for the feedback that makes it do different things. Probably the different peakings of the filter, whether they roll off slow or they peak or they ring or whatever, uh, things like that. So yeah, lots to learn. Lots, lots, lots more to learn. Thank you.